PC Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Ward for Kit Guru. Today's review is this G Skill Trident Z or Trident Z Neo DDR4 memory. Specifically, DDR4 3600 megahertz, 32 gigabytes dual channel, so 2 by 16 gig. Uh, pricing varies hugely depending on where you go shopping. B&H appears to be the cheapest, and surprisingly, G Skill's own store on Amazon looks to be the most expensive. So, pricing, uh, refer to our written page for uh, details and check links carefully because the pricing could throw you quite significantly. I'm working on the basis this is priced around the £169 at the time of this video. I've made some notes about the old way of buying DDR4 for your gaming or workstation PC. Assuming you were using an Intel desktop uh, processor, which after all was the mainstream, you would typically look at the clock speed, so 3200 or whatever megahertz. You'd look at the capacity in gigabytes, say 8 gigabytes or 16 gig, probably dual channel. Memory timings latency, that was one for the aficionado. Uh, the average noob doesn't know the first thing about latency and most enthusiasts know something about latency. It ticks of the clock for the memory to get its work done. Latency in uh, nanoseconds. Then we've got cost. As I've just referred to there, cost is hugely tricky. Uh, and we know that as you go up the uh, speed scale from a manufacturer such as Corsair or indeed G-Skill, uh, you can suddenly start paying a massive premium for the next speed bump. Difference between 4,000 megahertz and 3866 might be eye-watering. And you think, well, that's a tiny percentage increase in clock speed, huge amount of money. You have to, you have to look at the uh, price to speed uh, thing very carefully. Physical compatibility with your motherboard and your CPU cooler. With a great big air cooler like this Noctua, the physical compatibility matters. With an all-in-one liquid cooler, not so much. Nonetheless, installing memory on a motherboard, it has to fit your cooler. Sounds obvious, not always that easy. And then we get compatibility with your motherboard and CPU. In the case of Intel, generally speaking, plug it in, enable XMP in the BIOS job done. With AMD, it's been more difficult. However, with Ryzen 3000, this is an R9-3600X, compatibility has improved hugely. Original Ryzen, not so good. Ryzen 2000, significantly better, still a bit tricky. Ryzen 3000, oh yes, that's getting there. The motherboard is a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite. I have a range of memory here, and just to kick things off in the correct vein, these three sets of memory all use Samsung B-Die chips. This uh, Corsair Dominator Platinum 3200, this T46 Scalibur 3600, and this G-Skill Trident Z Royal 4000 would not work on this board with this processor, and I should probably say with this BIOS. Uh, with XMP enabled. Boot up absolutely fine, enable XMP, no joy. So that's Samsung B die in those three sets. However, this G Skill Trident Z RGB here also uses B die. Works like a dream, no problem. So the issue is not Samsung B die per se, it's combinations of things. And that's where the compatibility with your motherboard and CPU comes into the equation. So if we take that Trident Z, Trident Z RGB, and if we take this Royal with the Funktastic mirrored heat spreader and the lovely crystal uh, light diffuser, obviously the modules themselves physically are basically, well, they are identical except for the aesthetic differences. And that same is true of the Trident Z Neo. However, under the surface, all different. The RGB uses B die. The humorous thing there being is memory manufacturers tell us that Samsung has told them that B die is end of life and has been for months now, and yet they continue supplying it. So if, man if manufacturers want to buy B die, it seems that Samsung will continue making it. Then we get the Trident Z Royal 3200 megahertz specifically. That uses SK Hynix. C die, apparently 18 nanometer, but it's still the same density as Samsung B die. It's still 8 gigabit. Manufacturers switch between ICs all the time. Generally, they go to SK Hynix to save money. That's what we understand at any rate. And 
And then we come to Trident Z Neo with its AMD Ryzen logo on the packet. This is the first time that we've seen SK Hynix D die in action. And as far as we can see, D die and C die from SK Hynix is basically the same. Clearly, there's something different going on under the surface. Fabrication process appears to have gone from 18 nanometer to 17 nanometer, as if that makes the blinds a bit of difference. Density is still 8 gigabit. However, the modules are now 16 gig a piece, so 32 in total for dual channel. And it is compatible with AMD out of the box. Plug it in, turn on XMP, job done. That uh, AMP that we saw very briefly, which is kind of XMP for AMD, that's not a thing. Uh, when you turn on your PC, go in the BIOS, enable XMP, all being well, it should work. Otherwise, you've got problems. Manual memory tuning and so on. Well, if you like, it's an awful lot of hard work. And realistically, of these kits, four work out of the box, three do not. That's compatibility with your motherboard and CPU. And then we get RGB. Now you might not care less about RGB, in which case, fair enough. However, RGB is a thing and there's no doubt about it. This Corsair Vengeance LPX, this is now very slow, very crusty, very low density, four gigabytes per module, 3200 megahertz, um, modest latency. I keep it around because it's my get out of jail memory. It's as dumb as a brick. It's just black in color on this particular version. You can get them in red and blue as I recall, uh, but it just tends to work. If my LPX don't work, I've got a problem. G-Skill Flare X, also dumb as a brick in terms of just a black heat spreader. The significant thing with Flarex is compatible with Threadripper, original Threadripper. You could put four of these modules in an X399 board, it would work, or put two into other systems, they would work. So not exciting, heat spread is slightly taller than the LPX, no RGB, but again, gets me out of jail. And then we have the Trident Z RGB with the RGB under this uh, diffuser here. Looks very pretty, works with G-Skill's own uh, utility. The same is true, quite frankly, of the Royal, except it looks more glitzy with that uh, diffuser there. And the same is true of Neo. You have to use G-Skill's utility, it works perfectly well. It is not going to sync with your motherboard. There's a slight fly in the ointment here because it's tempting to say that no memory manufacturer's utility syncs with motherboards until CES the other week when Corsair announced they got a tie-in with the Zeus Aura. So from there's a beta now actually. If you have a an Zeus Aura motherboard and you're running Corsair memory and other bits and pieces and you're using their IQ software, you fire up Aura, minimize it, and then IQ will take over and will sync all your hardware, including your motherboard to IQ. So that has changed things slightly, if that's the route you want to go down. Other than that, all memory manufacturers, such as uh, Team, with their own utility for their memory, they're in a very similar position to G-Skill. You need the correct utility for that company. I think every memory manufacturer has just the one utility for their RGB. So you have your G-Skill utility, you fire it up, you control the memory, it looks lovely. The big thing with Neo is compatibility with AMD Ryzen. As we move on to discuss benchmarking, I've donned some Kit Guru merch because I need the wind at my back for this. Benchmarking memory is a thankless task. Synthetic tests work beautifully for memory, but finding a benefit in the real world or a problem in the real world, slightly more difficult. For our test setup, the motherboard is a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite. Graphics card is an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Founders Edition. Power supply is Seasonic Prime Platinum. We're using Noctua NH15 as our air cooler to make sure everything stays lovely and chill. Processor Ryzen 9 3900X running at auto settings out of the box. Memory XMP enabled. This is stock stuff. This is going for that dynamic, see what it can do if you just plug it in, turn it on and let it rip. So here's the thing with synthetic benchmarks. We can run tests and we demonstrate that faster memory works better and lower latency memory works better. We have the results that demonstrate that and this is no surprise whatsoever. There are a couple of little surprises, but I'll come to those. In the main, synthetic tests show that. What synthetic tests do not show is that an eight gigabyte kit, two by four gigabytes versus a two by 16, 32 gigabyte kit, it doesn't show any benefit or hardly any benefit of 32 gig over 16 gig or eight gig. 
funny but true. There are certain scenarios where if you, obviously if you're running multiple tabs, uh, you open Chrome and then open multiple tabs within your browser and such like, that's going to eat memory, we know that, but of course if you're benchmarking that's not a good thing to do because it's totally unrepeatable. So real world versus synthetic test, it's a horrible fraught situation. The Trident ZRGB 3866, this is fascinating. Uh, back when Luke did his launch of Ryzen 3000, he talked about the memory controller. Once you move beyond 3600 megahertz or so, the memory controller speed is halved. The spec of the 3866 with its 18, 19, 19, 39 timings, not brilliant timings, but not bad. The performance is low. The reason is that Ryzen 9 X570 is not driving this memory to its full speed and you can see the results so for Ryzen 9 unless you've got some clever manual settings in mind 3600 megahertz is as fast as you want to go in real world tests particularly games the 3600 pulls ahead by a small margin and where it specifically helps and we've seen this previously is in terms of raising minimum frame rates fun enough in some of our tests by up to 5 FPS, so a significant number of frames and a significant percentage. In other tests, you do see changes, you see benefits from the uh, Neo thanks to its 3600 megahertz speed, but they are small. One other thing you see with the Trident Z Neo when it's in action is the power draw for the system is higher, by about 5 watts. I had a word with Luke about this because I was seeing the same numbers consistently, and I said, what's going on here, to which he said, in essence, that's the system being allowed to work you know, to its max. The memory is just letting the system do its thing and as a result, performance is very slightly higher and power draw is very slightly increased. Clearly, using more power is not a good thing. We like efficiency, we like low power draw. However, in this instance, it's just demonstrating that the slightly faster Neo is doing something compared to the other memories. Interesting to see that literally at the wall socket. In terms of the RGB illumination, the Neo looks perfectly decent, but it doesn't look significantly different to the Trident Z RGB. It does look substantially different to the Royal. I happen to like the look of the Royal a great deal. On the other hand, if you want uh, your memory to be part of your system rather than standing out as the look at me, look at me, then the Royal might not be for you. Pricing. If you buy Neo from B&H, the pricing is quite sensible. It is very slightly more expensive than a comparable kit of Corsair LPX. Not a lot in it. Then the LPX 32 gig kit has very slightly slower latencies than the Neo. In the real world, I don't think you'll notice much difference. The much bigger difference is the fact that the Neo is uh, RGB and is compatible with Ryzen 3000. That is its big selling point. The small percentage here or there, that's a bonus. The compatibility of Ryzen 3000, that is why you're buying this memory. So provided you pay sensible money, 170 or less for the 32 gig kit, 3600 megahertz, and you plug it into your X570 motherboard, I think you're gonna be very happy with Trident Z Neo. But the thing for me is not whether you get a little bit of extra performance or not, whether you boost your frame rates in games a tad. Those are welcome. It's not the end of the world. It's the compatibility with Ryzen 3000 that sells this memory for me. And therefore, I am pleased to give G-Skill Trident Z Neo the metaphorical thumbs up. It's a good product. I like it. And on that note, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button and subscribe. Head over to Teespring, buy a Kit Guru shirt, show us your support. We appreciate it. I'm Lee Order for Kit Guru. This is G-Skill Trident Z Neo 3600 megahertz.